Welcome to Leadership and Loyalty Tips for Executives. My name is Dov Barron. I'm your host. Thank you for joining us. If you are a regular, thank you for helping us to become the top uh, leadership podcast for Fortune 500 and also always in the top five for many different categories in leadership and certainly for family business. If you're a new listener or new viewer, thank you for joining us. And as always, we appreciate you keeping us relevant. So get yourself over to uh, iTunes, rate, review, and uh, let others know about the podcast. That would be really great. Really appreciate it. On today's show, I want to talk about something that I think is vitally important, which is the, the matrix, the measurement of success. And I want to go into how do we actually measure success so that you can see that where we fall down and where, where we've got these gaps and what we need to do about those gaps. So let's, let's dive right in. Okay. Um, today it is May 2nd. In a couple of days, I will be in Scotland uh, speaking at Schoon Palace to uh, a group of next-gen leaders from uh, wealthy families across Europe. And one of the things that I'm going to be talking about, one of the many things I'm going to be talking about is the matrix or the matrix for measurement of success. Now, whether you are part of the family business world or whether you're an executive or whether you are an entrepreneur, it comes down to this same issue that I've, I've really begun to notice is so ignored. When we think of success and we go, well, how do you measure it? Now, we all know that we all have our own sort of criteria for how we measure success. And, you know, it's very, that's very subjective. But when we get down to the quantitative, how do you actually measure it? What we usually fall on is money. We go, well, you know, I made a million this year. I'm, you know, we increased by 50 million or my salary went up by 100,000 or whatever it is. You know, we, we did a, uh, an extra 5 million in sales. Whatever your subject is, the, the, the quantitative level of it seems to be about money. And one of the things that I've been thinking about in, in context of that is that we don't really measure the other things that actually affect the money, that affect the bottom line. We don't measure those things anywhere near as well as we should. So, for instance, in my last book, which was called Fiercely Loyal, in that book, one of the things that I outlined was that the cost of a new employee is 1.5 to 2 times the average annual salary. So if somebody's making $100,000 a year and you take that new person on, it's going to cost you in training and development between $150,000 and $200,000, meaning there is no ROI, no return on your investment for at least two years. And we're spending well over $100 billion a year in training and development. That's a quantitative look at the loss of loyalty, which is, is a... Um, what we say, an intangible. We, we seem to think of that as an intangible. So loyalty is an intangible, but it has tangible results. And so that's what I want to challenge you to do with success is to look at the, the things that you consider intangible and where are the tangible quantitative costs or loss to that. So I want to put it to you to look at something called human capital. Um, on, one, on an earlier show, maybe even last year, I talked about how the S&P 500, if you looked at it 30 years ago, the uh, intangible factors, if a company had a, a, a value statement that was made up 40% of intangible assets, nobody would put that on the S&P 500. But today, more than 50% of the companies have more than 50% of their value in intangible assets. That's things like intellectual property, it's like uh, loyalty, it's a lot of other things that you can't actually grab a hold of as such, but they do have asset value that needs to be considered. So when you're looking at success, and particularly in context of succession, when you think about the last succession process, now whether again, whether that's a family business, whether it's the transfer of ownership or transfer of leadership, transfer of power, transfer of wealth and assets, or whether you're looking at that from a, a, a C-suite position, the transfer of one person in and one person out, 
When you look at those things, what is the cost? What does it actually cost you? Now, we just talked about training and development, but there are other human capital factors. And I would like to give you a little sort of outline of what those are from my point of view so that you can get a sense of where you need to go and how to look at the value of this. So the first of those pieces in human capital is what we call relational capital. Now, your relational capital is the people you know, the connections you have, the bond you have with those people, and the ability to connect at a very intimate level, a way to really know people. And without that relational capital, you're going to be losing a lot of money. And inside of an organization, that means you're going to be losing loyalty because people are not going to feel bonded and connected. In the level of your leadership team, there's not going to be a bond and connection. That's going to cost you again. It costs you in morale. It costs you in productivity. And, of course, it costs you in somebody simply not staying with you. So we'll take a look at emotional capital. And when you're trying to work out what the value of that is, look at the other side of it. What does it cost you if you don't have it? So that's the relational capital. Then we want to look at emotional capital slash emotional intelligence. And the emotional capital falls into two separate categories, which is the internal and the external. At an internal level, it's how well you know yourself. It's knowing what it is that drives you, what it is that impassions you, what it is that gets you up in the morning. It's knowing your why, you knowing your cause, knowing your purpose, and, and really having a, a deep, connected sense of what those things are. Are to you, but it's also knowing about what upsets you, what triggers you, and more importantly, why those things upset you and trigger you. That's part of your uh, emotional capital as it, uh, as it pertains to the human capital side of things. That's the internal level. At the external level, that's really understanding people, understanding what makes them tick, understanding what motivates them, what drives them, what empowers them, what disempowers them. If you don't know those things, then you, you're going to have a lot of losses going across the board. Those are going to impact all kinds of things. So that's your emotional capital, internally and externally. And then you have your leadership capital. Oh, by the way, and with the emotional capital, obviously, as I just said, it is the communication. But it's also that if you don't know those things, then you actually can't recognize behavior. So those things have an impact on behavior. If you know what makes people tick, then you'll know why the behavior is in place. If you know what upsets you, then you'll know why the behavior is in place. And again, those all things have cost. Then there's the leadership capital. So leadership capital, when you look at leadership capital, that is all the quantitative, all the academic, all the usual things you would go to business school for, you would get your MBA in, or you go to Harvard or the London School of Business or wherever it is you go to get that, that kind of academic study. But it's combining that with the human capital pieces I've just talked about and tying it together with a deep cause to serve something even greater than the organization that you're part of, to have your organization to be something that makes an impact. So all those things together, stack together to make the human capital. So when you think about that, think about, as an example, if Fred is the owner of the organization. He is the present leader, and he's got to do a transition over to the next generation of leadership, and Michael is going to take over. If Michael takes over and there is a complete successful transition of assets and wealth and, and options and all the other things, it's likely that you're going to say, well, that was a successful transition. But if in the process of doing it, Michael's brother was excommunicated from the family. If in the process, Susan, Michael's sister, um, is no longer allowed to come to any of the meetings, if the family is torn apart, if somebody, if Michael feels that in order to take on this role, he has to suppress his very being, sell his soul, if you will, then my question to you is, is that really a successful transition. And what I'm putting to you here is to take a look at the matrix of measurement that's being used and that maybe it's an incomplete one. One of the things that I've just developed actually is I've just developed a matrix for leadership because again, it's, it's another area. We, we don't really grasp what leadership is. It's this massive umbrella and it's too big. 
So what I've done is I've developed the, the authentic leadership matrix. And it's a matrix that you can put yourself through. You can test it out as five separate categories and you can look at each of those categories and you can really take a look at where you're strongest and where you're weakest and what it's costing you and the impact on you and on your organization. If you want to know more about the leadership matrix, you can actually write to me personally. I'll send it to you. I'll send you how to get a hold of it. Just send me a, an email. You can send it to dov at dovbaron.com. That's D-O-V at D-O-V-B-A-R-O-N.com. And just put in the subject line, leadership matrix, please. And you know what I'd really like from you is tell me something you get from these shows. Tell me what you what you like about them and how you use them because that is even more important than any of the information we give you. We want to know how to use it. What are you doing with this? You know, we're always doing our very best to supply you with the skills and the tools and the ability for you to really translate what we're doing into action to up-level your business and to up-level your leadership. So coming back, let's sort of give you a quick uh, roundup here. The challenge today was to look at the matrix by which you measure successful transition, whether that's a transition from a position to a position. So somebody leaving as a CEO and somebody coming in as a CEO or some other C-suite position or a manager position, doesn't matter. Um, or whether it's a family business, whether that is ownership, leadership, uh, operations, whatever it is, transfers of wealth and assets. Look at the matrix that you're using to measure success and then decide if that's a, an effective enough matrix. You know, I've known my doctor for a lot of years. Um, we, we're kind of friends. And so when I go in, you know, we kind of joke around a bit. And I went in on one particular occasion, you know, the annual check, and he takes my blood and he takes my blood pressure. And he asked me to jump up on the scale. And I jump up on the scale and he looks at me and he kind of smiles. And I said, what? And he says, I see you're still obese. And we both start laughing. Now, now why is that funny? Obesity is not funny. Well, it's funny because I'm not obese. So why would he make that joke? And the answer is because he's using a matrix that's ineffective, which is the BMI, the body mass index, which he is supposed to use. And all that measures is height to weight ratio. It's an ineffective measurement. It's an incomplete matrix of what it really takes. It doesn't measure my health, doesn't measure my fitness, doesn't consider my bone density, doesn't consider my ratio of fat to muscle, doesn't consider any of those things. And that's what I'm putting to you here. When you're looking at the matrix of what it takes to measure success, I want you to consider the human capital side of things because that is what will make all the difference. Till next time, this is Dov Barron at Full Monty Leadership. Find out more about me at fullmontyleadership.com. And if you're really committed to becoming the kind of leader you not only want but need to become, let me know. Reach out to me through fullmontyleadership.com or you can write to me at dov at dovbarron.com because we are committed to developing the next generation of leaders into outstanding leaders, but also developing outstanding leaders into becoming world-class family members and people. Till next time, this is Dov Barron, fullmontyleadership.com. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for sharing the show with everybody you know. Till next time, stay curious, my friend. Stay curious.